Arise business anchor, Bosin Amafaye. Well, he joins us now to discuss all these very interesting developments that we are very, hearing. Very interested indeed. Very. Bright uh, and early. Bright and early on Monday. On Monday. Okay, so the Nigerian Exchange Group, they've announced that they have a significant investment in mm. the Ethiopian Securities Exchange entering the East of Africa. How, how do you feel about this? I, I feel great. Uh, I've been a market journalist for, for three decades, and, and I feel really, really happy that for the first time in, in the 64-year history of the Nigerian exchange, the exchange is making a significant investment outside of its own shores. Now, if you look at the last 20, 30 years of the exchange, it has supported some other exchanges in Africa to set up their own. For example, the Ghana Stock Exchange. The, the, the stock exchange here was part of the setting up of the Ghana Stock Exchange. We supported them also via uh, market regulations in terms of training their stockbrokers. I know a number of Nigerian stockbrokers who are in Ghana for a couple of weeks and months to train their stockbrokers uh, on the Ghana Stock Exchange. And then they've also supported the BRVM in Cote d'Ivoire when it was uh, also uh, set up and all of that. And then you've got a few other relationships that the Nigerian Exchange have had. Now, the Ethiopian Securities Exchange is going to be a game changer, not only for the country of Ethiopia, but also for the entire new African exchange linkage project, which the ASEA is currently pursuing. And this is very significant to the extent that the Ethiopian Securities Exchange is ready to open for business in the third quarter, which is starting from July to, to September. And what they've done was to go to the market. Last week or so, they raised about 1.3 billion bear, which is the country's currency. They're looking for strategic investors from institutions around the world. And you've got institutional investors from the UK, for example, uh, who, who are now part of the strategic investor in the Ethiopian Securities Exchange. The Nigerian Exchange Group is uh, making this investment after two years after it became a demutualized exchange uh, on its own. So going outside the shores of Nigeria to make strategic investment in the uh, Ethiopian Securities Exchange is, is good business. When the Ethiopian Securities Exchange gets open, the news on the street was that the country's Ethi Ethiopian telecommunication will be an iconic uh, company that will be listed on that exchange. So that exchange is going to pay dividend, is going to give returns to the Nigerian Exchange Group, uh, PLC. It also means that uh, we will be able to benefit from the second most populous country in Africa, if when you leave Nigeria, of course, uh, is uh, Ethiopia. And that's a very strategic position that Ethiopia uh, holds if you look at the reforms being done recently in the financial services industry, in telecommunications and all that. Last week, the Ethiopia got some support from the IMF. And then, of course, you saw some of those funds go into helping the country to rebuild and come out of the uh, civil war in, in the Tigray region. Now, all of this will be very important to Nigerian exchange group. Already, Ethiopia has one of the best commodities exchanges on the African continent, which was set up uh, more than uh, about a dozen years ago. Uh, uh, and it's running really well uh, uh, in Ethiopia. So having a commodity, a functional commodities exchange and now a functional securities exchange is going to be a game changer for the country. Is it good news for Nigerian exchange group? It's good for Nigerian exchange group. It's good for Nigeria as a country is good for our PR, is good for everything in terms of the fact that we are now making investment outside the country. Nigeria itself needs to make strategic investments outside the country itself, which the NGX is doing, and I think the government can look into this as a way of buying into maybe some oil and gas companies. We can invest in Saudi Aramco, we can invest in Ghana National Oil, we can invest in a lot of other uh, uh, assets and investment and businesses across Africa and around the world, by the way. Oh, very well said. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, you know, issued a circular to Bureau de Change Operators on sale of $10,000 to each BDC at a rate of 1101 to a dollar. What are your okay. thoughts? Interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, interesting. Interesting. In inter interesting, interesting. Uh, because the, the Central Bank is, uh, is bringing out, it's opening its war chest. Uh, mm. Well, we can, can you call it a war chest? Because again, we've done, we've done about roughly a little above $1 billion defending the Naira so far. And we're picking this money from our, our reserves. The news came out this morning from Bloomberg that another $1 billion will be ready from Africa Bank next month. 
uh, to also defend. Remember, yes. when the NNPC Afrexim Bank deal was put together a couple of months ago, that $3.3 billion, the headline story from the NNPC was that the money will come in to help the central bank defend the Naira. Right. So if we get that $3.3 billion, I think we spend at least about $1 billion out of it or so. I think we should have about $2 billion or so left in the manner of speaking. That means that the central bank still has a little bit more firepower to move into the month of April. Having done significantly well in the month of March and now moving to the new month of April, now trying to sell below the street level is to cut out speculators. Now, just as I was coming into the studios, the central bank also released another uh, 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 a press statement saying that banks should not use, uh, banks are not allowed, commercial banks are not allowed to use domiciliary accounts as a collateral for anyone who wants to take loan in, in local currency. That's also to, to uh, sterilize uh, uh, domiciliary accounts in dollars and prevent any likely misbehavior by commercial banks and whatever customers to try and you, unless you're doing the letter of credit, for example, if you want to open a letter of credit, you want to import raw materials, machinery, whatsoever, then if you have millions of dollars in your domiciliary account, then you can use that as a collateral. But you can't take Naira out and say, I'm going to use my dollar account as a collateral. So every day, the Cardoso team is coming up with every way to ring first the effects and prevent speculative activities. And I think to, uh, to an extent it's really, really winning uh, as far as it's concerned. Whether that will be the, 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 the silver bullet for inflation is anyone's guess. It's not going to be. The, gov the central bank is giving so much leeway and doing so much right now, expecting the fiscal authorities to complement what it's been doing so far. We're waiting for the government, the federal government to be more precise, the executive branch, to work something out with the legislature very quickly to support what Cardoso is doing at the center bank because the center bank does not have that what you call uh, the the deep pockets right. the uh, what you call the bottomless pit it's, uh, uh, to, to keep digging in and defend the naira it, it can't do it forever. The, the fiscal authorities had to come in quickly and support the, the central bank. That, that's where we Com are. Complex issues but, but, right but, there. But that's good news. 1,100? Not, not a no, top we, is we, we have movement. We have movement, and it's In good. a positive territory. But let's, let's uh, jump over to Egypt. Uh, their annual urban oh. consumer inflation price, it's uh, lowered to 33.3%. Some, um, some, some as, good news. Yes, yeah, some good news for President Al Sisi, but it's not really good news if you consider the latest around the gas shortage that Egypt is currently facing. Right. Now they got a problem with that. They just done with the devaluation as you talked about. They just got some support from the IMF. We talk about the last a figure was five billion US dollars. The headline figure is about 20 billion US dollars. UAE is coming in with its own uh, pile of cash to support LCC. It just got a second term inauguration done a few weeks ago. So it looks all good, but it's not looking good right now with the gas shortage. Now, if you raise fuel prices, and Egypt has since removed subsidy on electricity long ago and told everybody to pay the right amount of tariff for electricity. Now that it has gas shortage, that's no good news at all for the government that relies so much on, 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 on gas, not only for export, but also for domestic consumption. So it's quite a tough one right now for President El Sisi. Some good news on inflation, but hey, you've got to deal with energy issue and energy is king, whatever you look at, whether you're using petrol, using gas, whatever you're using, once energy has a problem, then you've got a big problem on your hand, just like us. <laughs> you just had to chip that in, didn't you? I just got to chip that in. <laughs> All right, Mr. Sanka, Buster Number 5, thank you so much for joining us My on pleasure. this day. Thank you very much. <laughs>